All right. Here's a vitally important lesson for you. I do not want you to be a broker that just takes orders from their customers. I don't want you to be a server that waits tables, that takes orders no matter what, no matter how annoying the order is, no matter how much, you know, I don't want any mail, I don't want pickles, blah, 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 no matter how annoying the order is, you just take it, right? Well, in real estate, it's not like that. The brokers who just take orders from customers, from clients are, to me, novice brokers. If you're an order taker, you're not an advisor. There's a big difference between an order taker and an advisor. I mentioned what an order taker is, you're just taking orders, right? An advisor, an advisor keeps clients sane and reasonable, okay? So <laughs> buying and selling real estate, it's a very stressful process for your client. And clients can become insane and unreasonable, right? So when that happens, it's your job to keep them sane and reasonable. Like in a transaction, when it's about to blow up because two parties are negotiating and they can't come to an agreement, it's your job to make your client sane and reasonable and to make that deal happen and meet in the middle somewhere, right? So when you're, when you're looking at this, you gotta be aware that if you just take orders, you're not gonna do as many deals because more deals will fall apart. I haven't even mentioned the transaction process yet, but when you go into an escrow, when you go into a new deal, you go under contract, buyer and seller meet together on price, so you have a contract. From that point when you go into contract, there's a lot of things that happen, right? It's not just, hey, uh, it's not just, hey, me and you, buyer, seller, you know, we agreed on price, now we're gonna close. It's, it's nothing like that. When you go into contract is when the work starts. And, if you can't keep your clients on this line, if they fall too up and down the line, which means you gotta keep them sane on the track to closing. If they go up too far, they're gonna cancel. If they go down too far, they're gonna cancel. Transactions close, uh, cancel all the time in this business. And this is why being an authority figure to your clients is so important. If your client is a buyer, and they see something small wrong with the property and they get super scared of it because it's their first time buying the property, it's your job to calm them down and say, hey, this is just a broken faucet. It takes $500 to fix this. It's not gonna ruin your investment. It's gonna be okay. You're still gonna survive. They say, oh, well, you know, the, the seller didn't do the job right. The, the work wasn't done good. I just wanna cancel. No, 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 calm down, trust me. It's just a small fix, they'll get it done, and we'll get it closed. I remember a first time buyer I worked with a year ago. First time buyer, amazing person. I was selling a five unit property in San Diego, and there were some shingles on the roof that were like missing. And there was maybe like a roof gutter missing, and I think there was like, a kitchen sink that had like a tiny bit of mold at the bottom, like where the water dripped a little bit because the sink wasn't fully tightened. And she threw a fit when the inspection report came in. She was like freaking out like, oh my gosh, there's mold, There's the roof is all destroyed, there's no rain gutter, you know, the water's gonna drain down wrong and destroy everything. I'm like, listen, it's gonna be okay. Inspection reports were made to look like this. These people literally get paid thousands of dollars to make this report to scare you not to buy the property. They tell you everything that's wrong with the property, but I'm telling you, this property's in great condition. It did a great job on the renovation. Yes, there's some roof shingles missing. They'll replace that for a couple hundred bucks of labor. And yes, there's some mold under the sink. But listen, I can go out there and put some bleach on it myself and wash it off. It clearly says in the report, it's not black mold, it's not anything crazy. And if it was black mold, we could just replace the wood and we'll be good and test the air and we're done. Yes, the roof gutter's missing. That's maybe maximum 500 bucks to fix, not even, right? So when I told her this in a nice way, because you can't sound like a smart ass. You say, look, I totally understand your concerns. I totally get what you're saying, but let's just take a step back. Look at how, this property is a great investment. Let's call her Donna. Donna, if you look at the numbers, right, this is the exact kind of return you're looking for, right? Yeah, you're right. And this property is well renovated, right? Yeah, but there's mold. Yeah, I, I know there's mold. I, I get it. 
But listen, if the seller were to take care of that mold issue and they repaired those issues about the roof and the roof gutter that you had concerns about, which I know they'll do, would you consider moving forward? And she said, yes, it was fine, but she made a huge commotion out of it. But the thing is, if I would have been an order taker in that situation, said, oh yeah, you're right, this is so bad, this is such a bad situation, we should just cancel, you're right, you're right. Then the deal would have been dead and I wouldn't have gotten paid. But instead, I made the deal happen, I made about $40,000, everyone was happy, Donna made a great investment, she called me actually a couple weeks ago saying how well the property is doing and how happy she is about it and she might consider selling it in two years to do an exchange with me right so now I have another commission coming in because I did that deal with her so look like you just don't be an order taker I hope that story brings it home I'll give you much more examples on how to not be an order taker but you're not a server you're not a waiter you're a multi-family advisor